Many thanks for rejoining us again on the program is Good Morning Abuja showing only on the Unity Station NCA Channel 5 Abuja. Now, art is not just what you see, but what you make others see. And the job of an artist is to make you appreciate and care about things that ordinarily you don't have any business to care about. This morning, I've been joined with an art enthusiast and also mixed media artist to talk about how we can use art as a tool to preserve our culture and our tradition. Help me welcome Amsa Yaro to the program. Thank you very Amsa much. Amsa Yaro, you're welcome to the program. Thank you. All right. Okay, uh, the mixed media artist. Yes. Who is a mixed media artist? Uh, a mixed media artist is, is a visual artist who doesn't lock themselves down to just paintings okay. or painting um, primarily on a flat surface. Okay. Uh, and why I call myself that is because I enjoy exploring with other types of um, uh, techniques, okay. um, different ways of creating art okay. and like even using videos and voiceovers to create something that it, that has not existed before. Wow. Yes. So why did you go into becoming an artist? I've always wanted to become an artist, actually. Uh, I almost read creative arts wow. in, in Unimate. Okay. But my dad, knowing how hard the, the life could be, he said, OK, it's already an innate a talent of mine. Mm. Why don't I have a plan B? Okay. which I actually studied mass communication. Oh, wow, welcome. Yes. Okay. yes. Wow, it's great. Uh, now, um, you know, in this part of uh, the country, do we really appreciate uh, the uh, works of art? Yeah, I, I honestly think that we do. We just don't know that we appreciate art. Wow. And because of that, it feels like we don't value it. Mm -hmm. But it shows in literally um, every single thing we do, the clothes we wear, how we make our food, how we pick out the colors for our homes, how we ensure that our offices um, are, are spaces at which we express ourselves in whichever way possible. Wow. Okay, this morning we are looking at how we can use art to preserve our culture, our traditions. Okay, let's start. How can we use art to we, preserve our culture? Yes, um, and that is a fantastic question because we are already using art to preserve our culture. The way we dance, okay. our movies, our poets, our writers, our, um, our visual artists, our sculptors, our artisans, we are already preserving um, culture and tradition. There is no wed wedding right now that you, you wouldn't see Ashoki yeah. being displayed. That is our culture, at least specifically Yoruba culture. And that is being expressed and that is being preserved because we're using it in our present time. Okay. Yes. You know, when you say work, works of art, artists, you know, <clears throat> ordinarily the, the minds of people go to paintings and uh, other uh, woodworks and what, what we have now in this digital age, mm -hmm. again, mm -hmm. how can we use art? to preserve our culture in this digital age? Um, well, the di digital tools are a fantastic way of preserving uh, arts and culture. Okay. We've seen how we have found, excuse me, yeah. <clears throat> we see how we have found tapes of 1900s in many of our museums. And then those types of tapes are actually pre-recorded or cleaned up to become digital, um, into di digital formats. That's one way that the digital tools are being used to preserve such things. We have photography as well. People yes. used to use film for, um, for their cameras. Now people just end up using your SD card yes. and you're able to store so much. You can, you can literally um, take so many pictures without feeling limited to only 35 or I, I believe there were 60 at the time of film. Now you can take thousands and that is part of preserving culture as well. Okay, thank you so much for that wonderful response. Again, I want to bring you to the question of how, how, how. Mm -hmm. Now, how can we use the work, works of art to bring back our old memories yes. to play? Um, again, like I said, we are, we are kind of already doing that. It just feels, because it's, um, it feels it's the norm, we don't see it as something significant. But people are already doing that. Like I said, we have writers who end up telling stories of those days and then they tell it 
they tell it from the perspective of people that have either lived it or people that have lived with those that have lived it. That's one way of preserving, um, preserving our culture. We still have places like the Vida Glass um, makers that are, they are literally preserving um, skills and techniques that have been used over hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. Yes, we still have people that are, in, that are metal smiths that are still using techniques and even studios that were used hundreds and hundreds of years. We are still preserving culture. We have Kano, like the Kano dye pits, for example. And there are many um, companies that are actually taking Nigerian cotton fabric, getting them dyed there, bringing them, selling them, making huge collections that are being sold all around the world. So we are already doing it. I think the, the, the main thing we should be asking ourselves is how do we continue to do this? So well, now that you ask how do yes. we continue how to we do can this? continue yeah. to do this is making sure that um, that these resources are well uh, um, are well taken care of in the sense of resources, in the sense of investments, in the sense of giving them platforms that they know that they can show what they're doing and 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 make sure it's been done well. Okay, thank you so much again. And uh, coming to you, uh, Amsa, we want you to give us some success stories because um, you know. With uh, the economic situation we find ourselves mm -hmm. now, uh, do people really go to 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 buy works of art, paintings, and or uh, all what you have? You've been into this uh, for a while yes. now. Yeah. Give us some success story and how you can encourage youth to get into your space. Okay, um, there's one example that I saw last night. Mm -hmm. I um, I don't know if I'm allowed to call other people's names. But there's an artist, uh, a ceramist in Lagos, who just yesterday posted up um, uh, um, a video on Instagram that he was invited to a three months residency program in China. And he is a ceramist in Lagos. We have other names, for example, um, like Lao Lu Sebanjo, for example, who is an artist, a Nigerian artist in New York and his work has been sold in so many places. He is doing very well for himself. And his work is, at, the whole theme is based on the secret art of the Ori. That's preserving culture. Yeah. That is him being an artist as yeah. well. We have people like Pedro Alatiche that is showing in so many places around the world. We have Chief Mike, for example, who gets um, international students to come to her studio to actually learn these things. That's why people are wearing Adire right now. Adire is a trend right now. Because like, people, like what exactly you're like, like, like what I'm putting wow. on right now, because people are doing these things. We do understand that it can be hard yeah. to do it. We also understand that, yes, we have to eat as well. It's but in the end, lots of Nigerians are kind of fine-tuned into surviving. And we need to start learning how to thrive instead of survive. And one of the ways that we can do that is by expressing ourselves through art. Art is one of the easiest ways to do that. It, you don't necessarily need the most expensive tools. You can use what is available around you. If you even don't have tools, you can dance, you can sing, you can do poetry, you can do videography. Everyone has a, a fantastic phone right now. They can make all sorts of things with it. There are so many ways that we can express ourselves that we shouldn't lock ourselves down to just one thing. One thing. Yes. Okay, talking about uh, art education, how do you think we can uh, inculcate this into our curriculum, starting from the scratch and making our children grow with that uh, imagination? Yeah, it's, um, that is a very good question because I think one of the reasons as to why I am an artist is because of the school I went okay. to. They exposed us to different types of things. And, and from there, also the secondary school as well, I was exposed to different types of things, but not only in schools, even in our environment as well, which is why public art is something that should be revered and, and every city should take an interest in public art. So that when people are surrounded by art, they know what is possible. We need to have sculptures. We need to have murals everywhere, not just only at the art center or at government buildings. 
we should have them in our schools, we should have them in our libraries, we should have them in our, in our play, play spaces. Kids should have access to, even if it's just one hour a week, where they get to just play with materials and do whatever it is they want to do. That, just that little time of being able to express themselves would encourage so many, so many artistic talents mm -hmm. that we have just sitting there because they've, they've been given that avenue to do that. Okay, talking about uh, how we can access the works of art now, how can uh, art museums and galleries uh, promote uh, culture? And our traditions. Um, they are they are kind of already doing that for the fact that they they open up exhibitions and and themes around their collection. They can still do more by ensuring that they have relationships with schools, for example. They have relationships with universities. They have relationships with anywhere that you find children, or in fact, a group of people. It's not only kids that need to be exposed to this; even their parents as well need to be exposed to this for them to show what is possible. So that's one way that museums can do that. They can also find um, this audience where the audience are. They can find them online on the internet. Every museum out there should at least have one Instagram account, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok. You can use all of these things where they are free to use and to show what you have there. Even though we do, again, we understand that resources are limited. Mm -hmm. Investment doesn't really go into these places because in, in general, people don't think they are important, but they are, it's, they are the essence of life. Art is the essence of life. Without it, we wouldn't survive in any way whatsoever. So let's, let's give those spaces the kind of support they need through either through money or resources, time, space as well. Okay, before you are a, a young person in the world of arts, before I tell you to advise our people, I want you to tell me what you're doing differently that will make me appreciate uh, the works of arts that you're That into. I do. Um, I'll be very honest here. I, I, I don't wait for people to appreciate my work before I do them. Because like I said, it is an expression of oneself. So if it's, if it, and the thing is that again, art is subjective. So what could be beautiful to you might not, might not be beautiful yeah. to someone else or in maybe a piece, what you see in that piece is not what someone else would see. Even while I'm working on a piece, people have come to me and they've told me that a different perspective that I didn't even see while working on it. So I, I, I try to make sure that I don't, um, I don't lean on what other people are saying about my work. At that point in time, this is what I want to express. This is how I want to express it. And as long as it's out here in the open, as long as I bring it from the ether of imagination and I bring it to life, my work is done. Well, yes. Well, well done. And uh, before we go quickly, I want you to advise everyone watching us right now how we can appre appreciate uh, the works of art as we talk about preservation of art and our culture. Yes. One way to appreciate art is to involve yourself in it. I do understand time is, um, time is money here. Yeah. People tend to not, people tend to just work, work, work. But even if you give your, even if it's five minutes where you allow yourself to sit down, you open up either a, a notebook even with your pen, it doesn't have to necessarily be a pencil. You do crazy drawings all over it. You, you, you write, you, uh, again, like I said, you sing, you shout, you dance. All of these things are what art is. And by the time you find yourself doing these things, you now sit down and realize that, oh, people that actually do these things, even though it's five minutes, I kind of feel good. I've done this thing for yeah. five minutes. Fulfilled. Yes, <laughs> you feel fulfilled. Yeah. But then apart from that, you now understand the value behind every artwork out there. Even though it's something that is not to your taste, you now understand the amount of skill, time, patience, uh, and growth that has gone into every piece that you see. 
Well, thank you so much for your time with us this morning and making us to see the works of art from your perspective. You know, when I was introducing the program, I said, uh, you know, art is not uh, what you see, but what others make you to see. Yes. It can make me see th some things as well as I can make you see some things. Exactly. And thank you for coming on our show to lend your voice on how we can use art to preserve our culture thank and you our very tradition. Much. We do really appreciate your time. Thank you. All right. And that is the voice of Amsa Yaro, a mixed media artist and also an art enthusiast. This morning, she has taught to us how we can use art as a tool to preserve our culture and our tradition. Now, let's go on this quick break. When we come back, we'll still be here and we'll bring more to you. Don't go anywhere. Many thanks for rejoining us and the program is Good Morning Abuja showing only on the Unity Station NTA Channel 5. We all know that youth are the bedrock of any nation. This morning, we want to talk about building inclusive community space for youth. Talking about how we can include youth in our leadership role and how a youth advocate who also who is also a former NANS president. Help me welcome Comrade Danielson Afan to the program. Comrade. Good to see you. Thank You're you, welcome. madam. All it's right. good to be with you again yes. after a little while. Well, <laughs> good to Thank see you. you. All Happy right. Pleasure. The topic good before morning. us this morning is how we can uh, uh, build inclusive community for our youth. And I know you, uh, you are the voice of the youth. So how can we actually create an enabling environment for youth to be included, talking about the leadership role in any organization? Thank you very much. Um, first and foremost, I want to say thank you for having me. And uh, of course, mention very quickly that you cannot have the society that thrives, that succeeds without the strength or the contribution of the younger generation. There's a saying in my dialect that when you interpret it in English, it means the society is built with the strength of the youth and the wisdom of the elders. Now, that goes to show that everything that has to do with strength and capacity resides with the younger generation. And that's why if you check down the records, especially when Nigeria was better, you know, you realize that those who were governing Nigeria were in their 20s. The eldest of them was in his 30s, maybe uh, Nandi Azikwe at the time. So the likes of uh, Sadana of Sokoto, Awolowo, when they started, they were in their 20s and 30s and we saw results. The time that you have education that was freely and readily available for all students, where they get free education, free feeding, free accommodation, that's no longer available today. So what and how can we prepare the younger people for leadership? In your home, as a mother, as a father, you should ensure that you instill discipline okay. and quality of leadership in children. And of course, in schools, that's why we also go to school. In, of course, in school, let them know that you must be responsible. You must also watch out for others. Like uh, road safety, when they're training you during a uh, driving school, mm. they will tell you that you drive your car and you drive for, for others. others. So it means you must know that you have responsibility over others. And that is leadership. And when that is instilled in every young person from his home, and from his immediate enclave, then that such a person can come out and be responsible. For example, you have a class where you just see everybody making noise. There must be someone that must say, no, 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 can we stop making can noise? Stop making the noise. teacher will come and hear us, they will punish all of us. That is leadership. leadership. Mm. That is leadership. That's how it starts. Somebody must struggle, you must be responsible. You must take responsibility. If everything is going wrong and people, you must be there to say, no, this is wrong. We can't do this part. This is the right thing we should do. Now to what the government or the society is expected of, or what is expected of the society, is that the society must ensure that it identifies the right people. How? We're talking about identifying the right people. How? Good. You know, these days we have those, they just want you to uh, boot liquors, they want you to just want you to you know subject you to some kind of you know activities to show that yes you are loyal completely before anybody will say no go here or go there or take this or take that in what they call recommendation 
But the true sense of it is the ability to say, no, these persons can do things rightly. Mm -hmm. It's not because they are loyal to you or because they are errand boys, but because you know they have talent qualities. They have capacity to do things and do it well. I'm always guided by the saying of Abraham Lincoln when he said, when a man is called to be a street sweeper, yes. he must sweep the street so clean, like Michelangelo wrote songs, like uh, William Shakespeare wrote poetry, such that when the angels of heaven are descend descending, they will stop by and say they want to leave the street sweeper here. That's exactly what it is. That is, you must, anything you're doing, Just you must do it well. Do it well. Do it well. And that in its own is leadership. Okay, there are some youths that are obviously in their space doing wonderful, wonderfully well. The question now again is how can such youth be identified and be included into the, the governorship role to make a better nation? Well, that's 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 a clear thing. Yeah. I'll tell you that um, for most young persons who are in businesses, who are in private sector, that is itself leadership. Yes. You're providing leadership in that space. You have either employed people or you are employed and you are making sure you are doing things well in that organization. It's, that's itself leadership. It must not necessarily be governance mm -hmm. in terms of politics before leadership can be properly defined. It can be anywhere, whether in the church, in the mosque, in the market, in community service, you must have those who can be responsible, who will get things done rightly. And leadership must not necessarily be that, oh, until you become president yes. or governor. You can actually be a director in a ministry and, and, you, and, you, and you do yeah. things to the details that even the PAMSEC will have to say, no, I want this director to vet this document before it goes out. Not because it's your beat, but because he knows that you can do due diligence. diligence. Now, secondly, for those in the private sector who are doing things well, we have quite a number of them who have indicated interest in politics who have contested for positions as of reps, as of assembly, assembly, you know, for governance. And they are given chance. In most cases, in some cases rather, they win election. And some also get appointments in government and that keep going. But what we are talking about is the deliberate preparation mm -hmm. for the leadership. Yes. Like knowing that, no, we want space. And that's exactly what the president is presently doing. Okay. I, I give him kudos for that. All right. For the first time, we're having Ministry of Youth being added by young people. Young people. Mm? And it's not, it's not only done it for one, he did two, male and female. He balanced, he balanced gender. gender. All right? And they are all both young people that you can say, not what we used to have. When you say youth leader, even in the parties in the 60s, in his 50s, but as ministers, they are in their early 40s as ministers, and we've not had it this good in a long time. And you check the cabinet in the government, quite a lot of the ministers are young people. You talk of the Minister for Communications, you talk of the Minister for Interior, who has been doing excellently well. I mean, that is one minister that I can beat my chest and say, oh no, he's a star boy of the government. Because for everything he has touched, for everything he has worked on, he has worked on it perfectly well that anyone will say this young man is doing well. And it is not about age. It, performance and leadership is not it's a not function of age. age. It's the ability to identify where the problem lies and the readiness to get it fixed. The and political this, will. Yeah, political. You talk of you know the immigration mm -hmm. under him, you see the reformation he has done there. Within before they will tell you there's no passport, there's no paper. You even people will even make payments in immigration offices for months, they will tell you no paper. And you ask, what is the big deal in printing paper to issue international passport to people, even when they are paid? This has always been a problem. But today, you can even the same day, or, the, or in one week or two weeks, your passport is it's ready. Passport. You can apply it on your phone. Your app is on the go. You can do it. You know, sterling performances. We are talking about young people. Yeah, young people. So I singled out so we can understand what youth strength mm -hmm. and capacity can do in governance. Yes. Now, you see, I mentioned the Minister of Communication being a young person too. Now, for that sector, it's completely a young people sector. A young people sector. There's no old person that can really do well in maybe except this particular generation now grows into the technology and becomes 40, 50, 60, then you can say, okay, you are. But it is measure, the wizardry resides with the young people. I have a little nephew who is just too much. You know, you ask him before you say, Jack, 
he has done more than what you expect from a university graduate. To, 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 to out of this world. He's out of this world. Yes. So that sector has a lot to offer to younger. And the economy there is very strong. There's a lot of money to be made, either within this country or beyond the country, okay. everywhere. Okay. So we, the government must also deploy a lot of resources into producing and I mean, uh, uh, results, Result. making life available for the younger generation from the ICT sector. And to add to it, I want you to talk about a favorable uh, government policy that can make you thrive in their space. Well, government policy is um, one thing that has always been a problem, especially in the market space uh, or private sector as, as, as it were. If government policy does not favor a particular sector, it becomes a problem for them to try. And that's why it is good that government at all times must formulate policies that will help the masses, that will help people in private sector or even everybody generally. For the communication sector, if we must narrow down to the communication sector, okay. we must have laws, you know, that helps the sector to thrive. Not the, the laws that will restrict them, that will cage them, that will gag them, you know. Not the laws or the regulations that will not help them to operate. Because just like we have in India, there are laws that will not even allow you to do anything with the international. But though they are doing some developments, but there are lots of things that are not allowed through their laws. So such things cannot be encouraged here. Governments must come up with policies that will help to develop the country. Okay, as we round off quickly on this uh, segment of discussion, we want you to talk to our youth because, uh, like you say, we can leverage the capacity and strength of the youth to help build our nation. Uh, as we round off, talk to the youth. Okay, uh, Nigerian youth, I just want to, you know, urge you uh, to understand that um, the future lies in your hands. The responsibility of projecting a stronger, stable, and of course, functioning Nigeria is inched upon your shoulder and you cannot betray it. You cannot let it down. Take up any sector you find yourself and get things done rightly. You can be, there can be, you know, hitches, there can be ups and downs, but with your resolute mind, with your focus and dedication, I assure you that the star is just, I mean, the sky is just going to be your starting point. And of course, you become the star in your domain. Certainly, I can see a very bright light at the end of the tunnel. Let's keep striving. Let's keep striving. Definitely, we'll try. We'll live to succeed and things will get better. Contribute your quota, whether in your private sector, in your office, make sure you do things rightly. If you're in the government sector, please get things done rightly and let's know that Nigeria is ours to build and to sustain. Nigeria is ours to build and to sustain. Thank you so much for your time with us on the show this morning. It's my pleasure. All right. it's my You're pleasure. welcome. Thank you so much. Well, Comrade Daniel Sinapan has told us a lot in our space as youth. Let's keep contributing our quota to the development of our nation. Now let's go on this quick break. When we come back, we have more for you on the program. Good morning, Abuja. Stay with us, please. Good to know you are still there. And the program is Good Morning Abuja, showing only on the Unity Station NTA Channel 5 Abuja. And now to road matters. This morning, we will be looking at road safety management with focus on driver's behavior on our roads. And as usual, we have a friend of the house who is always coming here every Thursday to give us education on every topic that we are going to be discussing Per day. This morning, help us welcome CRC Sylvanus Ekoyong, who is the Unit Head of Operations, Central Business District of this Road Safety Corps to the program. You're welcome to the program. Thank you, ma'am. All right. Good to see you again. I'm always love to be here. Okay. Road safety management, how we can manage our roads, uh, talking about driver's behavior on our roads. But before we step into our discussion, give us what happened uh, on our roads within the week on the review? Well, the overview on what happens during the week on that review, we find out that um, the attitude of drivers on the road uh, becoming some worrisome. And we have to also see what we can do and educate them 
to change their attitude. And that has been the situation we have been facing over during the week. And um, that's been, it has been a very nice uh, a week. No crash. That's uh, we do we recorded no crash, no crash. Oh. within the central okay. business district. But I don't I can't say it about other area, but okay. within the the Puja Central Business District, which um the head operations, we have not recorded any crash, and uh, the road has been fair, and the traffic situations is been under control. Right. We say thank you and kudos to you and your men. This morning, we want to focus on driver's behavior on our road. We know um, we cannot attribute that to the present economic situations, but so many things are happening on our roads and it just confirmed. How can we deepen and heighten our awareness to ensure people are conscious that they are on the wheel and they are driving on the road for themselves and for other people. You see, a, a driving is a very serious business. It is. That um, you don't just wake up and enter a vehicle and start moving. And that is why Joseph T. FRC came out with a policy that for you to be a licensed driver, you have to go through driving, sc driving school. You have to pass through this process of being through the driving school. And what do you do in driving school? Actually, to go and learn the driving culture on how to use the road and how to be safe driving while you're on the road. And that is why if, for you to obtain a driver's license today, you cannot just walk into any driver's license center to obtain a driver's license without obtaining a driving school certificate. That means you might have gone through driving school, have been taught on the rules covering the use of the road and your attitude and your behaviors. And apart from that, we don't even, re we don't rely only on driving school. We go out on the public education and carry out the campaigns in the motor parks, churches, mosques, schools, and organizations to just to educate every road users on the attitude of drivers on the road, mm -hmm. good attitude. You see, we can have many attitudes, but we are talking about the good attitude. Good that is what should to, be exhibited yes, on the road. On the yeah. road. You have to be patient on the road. You have to know that the road is a shared responsibility. Mm -hmm. It's not only you that have the right of way. Every other person that makes use of the road have the right of the road. So that means every driver must exhibit good attitude while being on the road. Talking about how we can exhibit good and right attitudes on our road. You know, there's something I have noticed uh, on our road these days. And like I said again, uh, we don't want to attribute that to the present situation because uh, we need to be safe. We need to be alive. You know, we have recorded uh, and seen a lot of absent mindedness on our roads. How can that be curtailed? We know you talked about common sense driving the other time. Yeah. How can that be curtailed to the barest minimum? See, the problem we are facing, like you said, you don't want to attribute it to economic yes. factors. But it's a not how you will not also attribute most of the problems to economic factors. There's a, 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 a husband, a father, leaving a house and have nothing to keep at home. And maybe the, some, maybe some women can be very troublesome. And I'm not saying all the women. And the children have been crying, no school fees, and uh, the car is giving him a sound and need to go to mechanic. And at that moment, you think a driver will be at the right sense of mind. That is why we tell them. But if you are not in your right sense of that's mind, why, why will you go on your That's way? where I'm coming. Okay. That we tell them, please, you are emotional intelligent. You have to be emotionally stable. Okay. If you are not emotionally stable, you don't make use of the road. You don't enter your vehicle. You don't carry a problem on your house, the problem of economy. To enter the road because when you carry this problem into the wheel and you enter the road, you risk your life, the life of the occupants of your vehicle and other road users. So it's, we don't want to say because of the economic hardship, people are absent-minded on the road. We advise you, yes, the economy is, might be might be tough, but please don't allow that to be to to add to other people's problems because when you are on the road and you are absent-minded and you hit other person's vehicle. I'm not saying there will, will be, maybe there is no death, and you hit another person's vehicles. It will cost you to repair that vehicle. You repair your own, if you're at fault, you repair another person's vehicles. And it is also adding to more economic hardship to you. Mm -hmm. So why don't you, instead of 
bringing their problems, home problems to the to the onto the road. Please keep it. When your mind is as settled and you are emotionally stable, you can now go to the road because one, your life is important. If you are not alive today, that problems in the road. When that problem you leave, you you are leaving the house and carrying the problem to the road will be double. Wow. Because you will not have money to pay the school fees. Yeah. The children will not go to school. And out of hunger, you enter the road and crash, and maybe you are no more alive. Will the children go to school again? The problem is double. So we advise the drivers, please forget about the economy hardship, forget about the problems you have at home. And Be at the good uh, behavior, concentrate while driving. Because we find out that distractions, yeah. distraction is one of the major causes of road traffic crash. Maybe you, you could tell us a little bit about uh, distracted driving again. Yes, because um, you see, when people, you are, you, you, apart from being the problems at, at home or economic hardship, uh, you can be in a good sense, a good mind, and you are, you, because you have won a, a lottery, and you are enjoying yourself, playing your radio, over entertainment, over happiness. At the same time, you are tuning your radio when you are not concentrating. In your entertainment, in radio can cause distractions. Use your phone while driving. You have to answer calls. You distract you. You carry your phone. I, 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 time I wonder, why would somebody be on steering and be texting? Oh. Because what you are supposed to do, the steering you are supposed to hold in your two hands. Two hands. And so we, this, you said the right way of holding the steering is a quarter to three. You hold your steering fan. And how will you leave your steering holding a phone and texting at the same time? And distractions. Mm -hmm. You see, some people will be driving and eating at the same time. Some people will be driving and drinking at the same time. These are distractions. It doesn't allow you to concentrate. And some, some drivers, what, what would they do? Quarreling with their driver, with their passengers in the vehicle. The passenger will be distracting the drivers. Driver, you are not speeding. Driver, increase your speed. And driver will say, no, I'm not going to increase the speed. They start quarreling. And that will be distractions because the driver will not be concentrating. And these are the major causes of the traffic crashes, distraction, distracted driving. Oh, thank you for responding well to that for us. And still talking about driver's behavior on our road, I want you to quickly give us some defensive uh, driving techniques. You know, on the road, they always say, uh, drive for everyone, drive for everyone. You know about yourself, but you don't know about the, the state of the mind of another person. Yeah. So give us some quickly some tips about defensive you know, when, when we are talking about defensive driving, we always tell somebody, if I'm the one driving, I'm not driving my vehicle alone. I believe I'm driving my vehicle. I'm driving the vehicle in my front. I'm also driving the vehicle behind me, possibly the vehicle by my side. That means I'm driving mostly three or four vehicles at the same time. Why am I saying so? Because I have to be defensive in driving. A person in my front can decide to match break uh, just automatically without me knowing if I'm too close to the person. That is why we, that is what we call breaking distance and stopping distance. So my breaking distance should make you should not be so or my, should not be close to the vehicle, so that in case of anything that happened, I could be able to maneuver my way out. And we believe that. Let's say I am the only sensible driver on the road. The person could be a mad person, a madman on the road, on the wheel. Who knows? So you have to, you have to also think that whosoever is driving at that moment, mm -hmm. you are the only sensible person on the road. Mm -hmm. So forget about any other person because that person, like we said, could not be in his senses. Right. And at that moment, you, if you are not looking at, you are not concentrating, looking at your front, Using your side mirrors, your both side mirror, using your inner mirror to also look at the vehicle behind you. What is happening behind you? What is happening in your front? What is happening beside you? You have to be cautious. You have to be, in short, let me just say, when you are driving, we don't need to be arrogant on the road. You see, yes. these days, drivers are so arrogant. You have to take things easy. On drivers the road. are so arrogant on the road. You are not struggling the road with anybody. You are not doing the road range. If you want to do range, go to the range and do it, not on the road. Because you see people, somebody wants to overtake, you want to block the person. You see, it doesn't make sense. Allow the person to go. Be patient. Be patient. Be polite in your driving. And allow people to also have the right of way. By so doing, you are driving, you are being defensive. You don't need to speed over, go to your excessive speed in your vehicle. 
When you, assess, when you go to the speed you cannot control, it causes a problem to you and to other motorists. And that is why you have to also win defensive means that everything in your vehicle must be working perfectly. Okay. Okay, and, and you have to also be at the right sense of mind before you be on the steering. Okay, and this is now taking me to my next question. You know, this is Ember Mont already. And uh, I know you and your men are preparing uh, a lot. Uh, you have started the campaign already. I want you to quickly take us through uh, the speed limit and enforcement and setting again. You see, like I we normally said, there are speed limits categorized based on roads and vehicles. They are all stated there in the Nigerian Highway Code. So, and um, we also advise people, don't go to the speed you cannot control. Okay, for example, you might set a, a, a car will go at the speed of 100 kilometers per hour on the expressway. Maybe on the highway, 90 kilometers. On the build-up area could be 45 kilometers. And now you are going at the build-up area, let me say 45 kilometers per hour. And you notice that this speed of 45 kilometers per hour, I will not be able to control mm -hmm. it in this build-up area. Then why don't you reduce your speed to the speed you can control? Mm -hmm. That is why I always tell people, when you reach the speed you can control, we call it a common sense speed limit. Because it's the speed you can control. It's not that because the government or the recommended speed limit is I must go at 100 kilometers per hour. So because of that, I must maintain the 100 kilometers per hour. No, it's not done that way. If a speed that you can go is 100 kilometers per hour and anything happens and you cannot control the vehicle, what happens? So reduce your speed to the speed you can control. Thank you so much. And um, quickly before you go, safety tips on our road, your advice and your final word. And like now we are, we're talking about the Ember Month. The Ember Month has already begun since in September. And um, it's a period that we attribute it to people always hustling, traveling, the volume of travelers will be increased, especially in the December period. People want to go home. And uh, we want to advise people, before you move from one point A to point B, make sure your vehicle is in good working condition. Make sure your tires are good. Don't manage tires. Don't personalize the combo tires. We don't, ex we don't buy expired tires. When you go to market to buy tires, look at the manufactured date of the tire. Because you will not see expiring date in the tire. You only see the manufacturing date in the tire. And we said the tire would last for four years. If the tire is already in the in the store as expired, please don't patronize them. Go to the brand new tire. And also make sure that your braking systems are working well. If your braking system are not good, please go and meet a qualified mechanic to fix your vehicle. And when you are driving, your attitude must be in a good, be on a good state of mind before you enter the road. Don't carry problems to the road. Don't be distracted and don't carry overload because you want to buy all the rice in Abuja and take to the village. You want to load the vehicle with all the bags of all rice, the goodies all the, I want all to the take, take to the village, and yeah. you carry all passengers in the vehicle because you want to make money. Please reduce the load and go on the recommended loads that the vehicle is supposed to carry. Thank, Thank you. you so much for your wonderful information and your time with us on the show this morning. We do really appreciate it. Yes, we have been talking about road safety management with focus on driver's behavior on our road. And I want to lend my voice to what he has just said. Before you move your car from point A to point B, ensure your car is functioning very well. And please, for road users, for drivers on the wheel, do not bring any problem from your home to the wheel because you're driving for yourself and you're driving for other people as well because you need to be alive for your family and for the society. And we've been talking to uh, CRC Silvana Zekpayon, who is the unit head of operations, Central Business District of the Federal Road Safety Corps. Now I'm going to go on this quick break. When we come back, we'll have more for you. Stay with us, please.